Thank you. I'll let you know. Oh, I'm ever so sorry about the shorthand, Mr. Hunter. Quite. Quite. Perhaps, uh... Well, off you go now. Sweet child. Well, if she's a secretary, I'm Greta Garbo with knobs on. You could be right. Now, you leave it to me. You're only going to make a mess of it and land yourself with somebody with more sex than sin. I'll pick you out a girl. That's very good of you, I'm sure, Mrs. T. I was hoping you'd say that. Most helpful. Well, you're not married, are you, Mr. Hunter? No. No, I was born a bachelor, and from the look of things, I shall die in the same state of grace. That well, seems funny to me. Funny? Well, a well-set-up fellow like yourself. Oh, thank you. Well, I'm sure there must have been somebody after you. It would be immodest of me to deny it, Mrs. T. There have been a few. Uh, I did a bunk, so to speak, at the last moment. I don't think I'm natural husband material, you know. Oh, go on. Anyway, you need somebody to look after. You can't deny that. And I'm sure there'd be plenty of women be only too glad of the chance. If you say so, Mrs. T. Yes, I do. Mind you, the last thing I want to do is to interfere in your private affairs. I'm sure of it. Mrs. T, I assure you, I live a blameless life. Yes, well, I'd like to see you settle. But as you say, it's none of my business. I didn't say that. You did. Did I? Oh, well, never mind. Anyway, we'll talk about it some other time. Now back to business. I've made up my mind about one or two things, Mr. Hunter, and I'd like your... Um, what do they say? Um, Moral support. Well, yes. First of all, I want you to read this letter. When you've done that, I'll explain what I want to do. Something's upset you, Mrs. T. Well, you might say that, yes. I'm not one for bad language as a rule, Mr. Hunter, but just at this minute, I feel bloody angry. This really is going too far. Keeping the entire board waiting. Sending for us. Sending for us. And then she's not even here. Well, when she does danger to an appearance, Joe, we must tell her quite firmly that we don't intend to stand for any more of this nonsense. Aye, we've been too easy, Charlie. Mm. This time we'll put our foot down with a bang. Yes. Now, look here, Mrs. Thursday. We've been very patient. But there is a limit. And we've reached it. Oh. Nay, yeah, I told you, but you wouldn't listen, would you? <sighs> now, first of all, I'd like you both to uh, sit down over here, where I can see you. Mrs. Thursday. Over here, please. You've been doing all the talking so far today. Now, it's our turn. Mr. Hunter's got one or two things to say to you, and he can't talk if you're frigging about like frogs in a bucket. <clears throat> yes, uh, quite, sir. Now, Sir Charles, uh, did you send this letter? I did. There's my signature. And you sent it the day before yesterday? Yes, but I failed to see what all you this is... You will, if you give him a chance to finish. This letter's a notice to quit. You uh, gave the uh, Merton Hall Youth Centre one month's notice. Yes, that's a very valuable site. We've been planning to develop it for years. They've had a good room for their money. Our money? Aye, for our money. At today's prices, we could sell it for development and clear a quarter of a million profit. More. Yes, but... Uh, why wasn't it sold before? Well, we wanted to, but Mr. Dunrich kept stalling for some reason or another. Because he liked what they were doing up there. Because he thought it was important that children should have a decent place to go. Who told you this? The two young people who joined us for lunch. They happened to be uh, members of the Merton Hall Centre, and naturally they're anxious about the future. Well, I hope you sent them off with a flea in their ears. We're not a charitable institution, you know. Dunrich should have put that property up for development two years ago. But he didn't. Well, we pressed him often enough, never fear. Ah, yes, you had to wait till he was dead in his grave, didn't you? Oh, now, Mrs. <laughs> Thursday, that's not quite fair. It's I... the plain truth, isn't it? You sent that letter two days ago. Well, I was only looking after the company's interest. Well, but that's the fundamental issue, is it not, Sir Charles? On whose authority was the letter sent? <sighs> well... Did you consult the board? There hasn't been a meeting. Mrs. Thursday assures me you didn't consult her. We fully intended to bring it to Mrs. Thursday's notice. 
And to place it before the board at a later date. Yes, when it was too late to do anything. Yes. Well, Miss, uh, Mrs. Thursday wishes this letter to be withdrawn. She also wishes that Merton Hall should be given to the Birmingham Corporation for use as a youth centre. Given? Given, Mr. Lever. Given by this group as a permanent memorial to our late founder, Mr. George Dunrich. That's right. He made this firm, he made you, he, everything. And he wanted that place to stay the way it is. The least we can do is to carry out his wishes. He earned that, I reckon. It's like giving them a cheque for a quarter of a million. I looked at the balance sheet. I believe we can afford it. 250. Now, I understand you gentlemen have made certain proposals to Mrs. T. Uh, I mean Thursday, as to your future status in the organization. We have. I have to inform you that Mrs. Thursday has carefully considered the matter. You mean if we agree to the Merton Hall scheme, you'll accept our proposition? Not quite. What's the catch? Well, Mrs. Thursday doesn't wish to play an active day-to-day -day part in the work of the group. She uh, frankly recognizes she hasn't the necessary business experience. Very sensible. Mr. Dunrich was, as you know, both chairman and managing director. Mrs. Thursday proposes to separate the two functions. She proposes that you, Sir Charles, and you, Mr. Lever, should assume the functions of joint managing directors and continue as vice chairman. And the chair? Well, Mrs. Thursday herself will become chairman. Yeah, somebody's got to keep an eye on you. Oh, damn it, this needs considering. I mean, as one of the largest shareholders, well, I don't... Thursday know. controls 75%, I believe. Mm -hmm. Joint managing directors, eh? That's not bad, Joe. No, I suppose not. May I take it you accept? Hobson's choice, isn't it? We accept. May I? Suits you perfectly, madam. Now, don't you come. Ah, oh, never mind. Sir Charles? Thank you. Right. We better have them all in and get started. Come in, gentlemen, please. <laughs> 